first uh, in, in following up on what Congressman Shea said. Um, the 9-11 Commission did do a pretty deep assessment of the threat. And one of the things that all 10 of us feel is that we have in some ways lost our sense of urgency in dealing with the threat. And we do worry about it. And the other thing I would say, having been in the government myself, is that it is an awesome responsibility when you feel that you are responsible for the safety of the American people. And so I can understand very well the impulse to try to do everything you can. Um, you heard uh, uh, members of the administration talk about the fear that they had when initiating any number of these programs that there would be another tragedy about to occur on their watch. So I'm extremely sympathetic with that. Having said that, I think this is a good moment in time to step back and look at what we have done and decide as a country what the appropriate mechanisms should be. And what, where I think we are to be faulted is that we have not had the debate between the administration and members of Congress, between Republicans and Democrats, that we need to have to understand whether we could condone Right. torture. What are the checks and balances you want to have when you're gathering all of these data? Are, th are these methods working? Are there ways in which we can eliminate the false choice between security and civil liberties? I happen to believe that we can m m to a much greater extent than we have. And I, you know, I, I think that we need to take the rhetoric level down and we need to have the involvement level go up. I think there's a great feeling on the part of the American people. They want it out of their minds. I was astonished, Ted, when I wa uh, wandered this country after we made our 9-11 Commission report at how few people were indeed interested. Let me, let me make a point here, if I may, and Mr. McNulty, if you'd be good enough to respond to it, and then I promise we'll get to one of the emails. What I must confess bothers me a little bit is that on the one hand, we have senior members of your administration talking about the existential threat to the United States. And on the other hand, we have the president saying, go on about your lives, go on about your business, go on vacation. Don't, for heaven's sake, think about raising taxes. Let's lower taxes. Don't worry about a draft, even though we don't have enough troops and we're sending young men and women back to Iraq for the third and fourth tour. There's a, there's a disconnect there. Either we're at war, then we should all be at war, not just the families of the 150,000 young men and women who are over there. Well, there's no doubt that this is a very different kind of war, and it makes for a very difficult challenge in communicating to the American people um, how we deal with it. And um, it would be a lot easier if the enemy wore a uniform and was fighting on a particular battlefield and we got reports back every day about whether we were winning or losing on that battlefield. No, this is a war that's fought right around us where we have um, operatives who want to kill everyone in this room and would uh, rejoice in the idea of doing it, um, contacting individuals in our country and seeking to carry out plots to do it. And our job is to try to discover that and stop that. But in the process of doing that, we have to encourage America to be America or they win already. Uh, we have to still be kind of vibrant, prosperous country that is enjoying all the freedoms that we do have under the law. Forgive me. Let me suggest to you that having America be America doesn't necessarily involve everybody going to Disney World. What it does involve is everybody abiding by the laws that we believe in. If those laws are being violated in any way, and the Supreme Court has now twice in the last few months indicated or a federal court and the Supreme Court have indicated over the last few months that the administration has violated the law. That's not the American way. May I respond to that please? Please. Well, when we talk about the courts uh, deciding that something's been done that wasn't lawful, that doesn't mean that individuals in the administration set out to break the law. It means that sometimes interpreting the law can be a very difficult thing. So in the Hamden decision, we have a Supreme Court decide five to four that military commissions need to be authorized by Congress. The administration believed that under the current authority we had that they were proper and they could exist. 
we had the decision about whether Common Article 3 applies, Geneva Convention applies or not to us. An unusual decision, but our reaction was, okay, the court has spoken, now we abide by that decision. But just because there's disagreement... Actually, it's not just we abide by the decision. Now we go to Congress. Not four years ago, not three years right. ago. We now we go to Congress and see if we can get Congress to fix it after the fact. Well, but my point is that just because we have a disagreement as to what the law says doesn't mean that we're ignoring the law. Point will take. That's what the courts are for.